All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka Kodash. Double honors to my elders and apostles at Great Millstone. Shalom to the elect, the ones out there doing his work diligently and chiefly keeping the faith, making your calling and your election sure. You don't get right into it. This is your brother Kazak coming back at you with another video of the branch in GMS uh, Gary um, hopefully this video is edifying uh, the title of this lesson is called uh, uh, Euphrates River drying up or the third world war um, I don't know what I'm gonna tell you yet but let's get right into it before I um, pull up this video here that I found on YouTube I'm gonna um, pull up these scriptures real quick I'll start with Revelation chapter 16 and verse 12. It says, And this, so like it, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So that's what you see in this picture right here, right? This was once all full of water, but like the scriptures has said, that we just read what the Euphrates River is being dried up to what make way for the kings of the east to make way for all these armies to war against each other in the third world war so this is why you see in this uh drying up okay let's uh go to um Isaiah 34 there's a precept I got uh it says come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. So listen to this. It says, For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. What is the slaughter? Talking about what the, that, that great battle, you know, that great slaughter over in the land of Jehoshaphat, right? The Valley of Decision. And that's where this is going to take place. That's why you see it's drying up, man. All right. The Lord is what? Preparing slaughter for them, man. All right. It's happening right now, you know, slowly but surely. But this precept right here shows you that it's speaking in the past tense. It says, he have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter. So this speaking like it's already done. That's how you know it's future prophecy. Is speaking in a past tense. Hey, it's going to get to the point where this is actually going to be um, a statement that that came to pass. You see, right now, this is a prophecy that will happen that I'm reading. This Isaiah 34 and 3, it says, Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountain shall be melted with their blood. You see, so hey man, this is gonna be a lot of bloodshed happening in that in that third world war when these nations fighting against each other, then eventually turn and fight against the Lord. This like Isaiah 34 and verse 4 it says, And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from a fig tree. You see? So hey, the Lord is going to rain those missiles down, you know, like like figs fall from a fig tree. If you know what a fig is, um, you can actually look that up. What is a fig or what is a fig tree? And you'll see how the fruit from the fig tree just fall down like the nukes will. It just comes straight down. Uh, this Isaiah 34 verse 5, it says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia, which are the Edomites. And upon the people of my curse to judgment, man. All those who despise the Lord, hey man, then you're gonna feel that fire. You know, you're gonna feel that fire. I got another precept right here. This is Matthew chapter 24. I'm gonna start at verse 6. It says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. You see, so hey, you hearing right now all on the all on the um, news, and you see how Ukraine is under attack, and it's just rumors of wars and all that. Nah, this ain't the end of it, or be all. Hey, there's more fights to come. You know, 
This is Matthew chapter 24, verse 7. It says, For a nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Hey Amen. We have earthquakes in Chicago. <laughs> you have earthquakes in Chicago and Cleveland. That's that's weird. You don't typically get earthquakes in those type of areas, but hey, it's happening, man. You know? And it's only going to get worse. The scripture says right here in Matthew 24, verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Hey, it's a lot of suffering coming. It's a lot of pain on the horizon. And those who do not trust in Yahweh, you will feel it all. All right, let's get to this video real quick. I want to make this a long lesson. Hopefully, once again, this is edifying. Up for years. However, since 2020, Euphrates River has been drying up for years. However, since 2020, the decreasing of the water flow is very alarming. Downstream in Iraq, 7 million people risk losing access to water. 5 million people, depending on Euphrates for water, are ingesting liquid that is unsafe. Waterborne disease outbreaks are on the rise, and contaminated water has caused diarrhea in the regions. In some communities, animals have started to die. Iraq is clearly in the midst of water crisis, with desertification affecting 40% of Iraq territory. A very high temperature is becoming very common and dust storm more intense. Rainfall has reduced greatly in recent years. Farmer are you see how the Lord does this, man? A hey, rainfall has reduced in year uh, in several years. Um, you can see right here. This was all full of water, man. At one point in time, this man couldn't even sit right here because it was all full of water. He would have drowned, man, you know, because it was deep. But now he's able to sit at the on a, on a riverbed, you see, because the Lord is enacting his judgment upon the earth. And the prophets, they are the ones who are telling you about this, man, you know. And if only those who can see will actually, you know, see what's going on fatigues and feeling hopeless the water levels of the euphrates river is the lowest level in recorded history from this video you can see clearly the euphrates river has stopped flowing to iraq and syria many people believe this happened because turkey have built more than 22 dams upstream the euphrates river see now that's total wickedness right a dam was built 22 dams turkey built to stop uh, to stop flow to Africa, they built twenty two dams. Let's go back to that picture, right here, Turkey, right. Look at all these dams that they built. All of these are dams, right. And all it does is stop the flow of water from the Euphrates River. It stops the flow from going to what Iraq. You can see that. So the Lord is using people to dry this place up. The Lord is using the actual earth because it's not raining over there. Hey, man, judgment is happening. And those who have the ice out, they will see. Look at Turkey, wicked ass. You built over 22 dams to hold back water for your place. Yeah, man, that's why they, Edomites got to go, man. You saw Edom got to go. This is straight wickedness. River. People in Iraq and Syria feel like they are living in the desert. Water is very rare. Their mighty rivers, Euphrates and Tigris, have left barely without water. Many Look at that. All of this was water. All of this. All of this is water. And the Lord has taken it away. Hey, this was one of the most fertile places on the earth. But now they're saying they live, they live in a desert. Many peoples are leaving their region because there is no water left to drink and to irrigate their farm. Many people accuse Turkey for weaponizing water by reducing the water flow. In fact, it is not happening. Turkey has never reduced the amount of water it released from its transboundaries river for political or other purposes. Turkish officials say that the region is facing the worst drought period due to lack of rainfall and the lowest in the last 30 years. Religion leaders are looking for answers in the Holy Scriptures. Surprise. Of course they're going to try to look for answers in the Holy Scriptures. Hey, we're giving you the answer on why it's happening right now.
In this video, I'm giving you the answer on why the Euphrates River drying up. Hey, because the Lord is on his way back, man. But that's not the answer that this world want. All right. They want another carnal answer. Right. Of course, everybody is going to try to return back to the scriptures uh, in their time of drought, in their time of famine. But the Lord is going to what? Cleave the cleave the uh, the tongues of the prophets. He's going to have their tongues stick to the roof of their mouth, meaning you ain't going to be able to say nothing, man. And the scriptures tell us that a famine of the word is coming. All right, so this truth is only going to be given to whoever the Lord wants. All right, and everybody else is going to be caught out there in the, in the destruction. Interestingly, the drying up of Euphrates River has mm -hmm. been mentioned thousand years ago in the Holy Bible. The drying up of Euphrates River is the sign of the apocalypse. By exactly. I just read to you over there in Revelation, what, 16 and 12, how... You know, the Lord dried up this place to make war with the nations on this earth. All right. That's the main reason why this is happening. This is a main prophecy that's taking place right now as we speak. And only a few paying attention. The Euphrates River has to dry up in order to make way for the for the uh, the kings of the east in order for them to battle in this space of course they can't battle in this space if it was straight river here but now it's going to be dry barren land where they're going to be able to bomb each other and fight each other and then eventually the lord is going to upset them in that battle right and they're going to try to turn and fight the lord all of them going to try to join up and turn and fight the lord and it's going to be you know straight destruction Bible scholars have offered various interpretations of Bible passages about the Euphrates River drying up. Some see it as a sign of the end time, which lead up to uh, when Jesus will return to judge the world. So we know the letter J is a Renaissance letter, okay? It, it wasn't around during the times of Yahawashai. Yahawashai is the true name of the Savior that's coming to deliver the elect, his people, right? Yahawashai means he delivers or he shall save. Okay, then the father, his name is Yahweh, meaning what? He is or he exists, you see? So that's why you see the uh, Y-H-W-H in the, sh in the churches, on the Bibles and things like that. That's the Lord's name, man. That's Yahweh, okay? And his son is Yahawashai, who will deliver his people, okay? Jesus is... The word Jesus, I believe, means earth pig. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, that's not who's coming back, man. And separate the writers from the weak. Even from this picture right here, okay, you can debunk this. How? Let's go to Revelation. You see this, right? This man had has stringy hair. You know what I'm saying? All this. You can see it from here. This is the um, picture that they have been pushing for countless generations. This is actually Cesare, uh, Cesare Borgia. All right. That's who he is. Okay. Um, Revelation um, 1 tells you what the Lord looks like. Okay. So this have already been debunked. The prophets have already, you know, through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Shai, cut this guy up. All right. The Lord has woolly hair. You know what I'm saying? Skin dark like it's burned in a furnace. Okay? He's not this Edomite. All right? It's me. Let me prove that. Just for the people who's new watching this. Oh, crap. My computer do that sometimes. Makes my words up. Why is it doing that? And then it just you see. This is it's it's just the computer, man. It's Esau Edom. Just start messing up now. All right. So let's go to Revelation one and fourteen. It says, "This is." Revelation 1 to 14, this is the depiction of our Lord Yahweh Shai. It says, 
His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Verse 15, and his feet like unto fine brass, so that's like a fine brass is a brown color. And then don't stop there, it says as if they were burned in a furnace. So you take that fine brass, that color, and then you throw it in a furnace, it's only going to get darker. So the Lord was a woolly haired, dark skinned man. But in this video, and all across the world, they'll show you a stringy haired devil, man. A so-called white man, but they're red. No, the Lord was not a so-called white man. The Lord was from the tribe of Judah, what the same tribe that um, King David came from, the same tribe that the so-called blacks, the so-called African Americans that's over here in America. You all come from that. I come from the tribe of Judah. You see what I'm saying? So the Lord looked like one of our uncles or one of our granddads or our grand. You know what I'm saying? That's how the Lord looked. The Euphrates River drawing up may point to the unleashing of the forces of darkness on the world. It could be referring to when the Antichrist will gather his armies to invade Israel. See, that's not that's not accurate either. The scriptures tell us that there is many Antichrists. If you if you go against Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, you're Antichrist. You're, you're anti Messiah. That's all it is. You want to go against the Lord bringing in the kingdom of heaven. You know, there's many anti-messiahs out here who go against the Lord. Hey, they are, they're in your own household. You see? So don't be mistaken thinking it's just going to be one antichrist, one anti-messiah that's, that's going to raise up and then uh, he's going to summon an army that's going to go against the Lord. That's not the case. All of these nations are against the Lord. All of these nations will try to fight against the Lord and they will be destroyed and go into captivity. You see what I'm saying? They will be Esau, Edom. They're going into captivity for a thousand years. And after that, they're going to be wiped out according to Obadiah. All these other nations after their captivity, they're going to go into their own lands, but they're still going to have to worship and praise Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, or they're going to be punished. In that scenario, the dry riverbed of the Euphrates can allow the armies to cross the river and attack Israel. Revelation 16 verse 12 says, The sixth angel poured out his bowls on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the king from the east. This prophecy not only identify as the judgment, but also give the reason for it. So a great army to the east can cross the Euphrates unimpeded. Next, the king of the earth gathered to the place that in Hebrew is called Tarmageddon. Now, who's the king of the earth? Esau, Edom, right? They're going to all meet at that place called Armageddon or the, the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And they're going to fight each other, man. All of these nations that, that has super weapon capability, they're all going to be fighting against each other and turn on each other, man. And eventually fight against the Lord. At that point, Jesus return and the battle fought at Armageddon will result in all God's enemies being destroyed. A key yes. All of the Lord, all of those who are against the Lord, man, destruction is coming upon you. So hopefully this was edifying. I'm going to end it by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakat, Kodash. Double honors once again to my elders and apostles at Great Millstone. Shalom to the elect. Once again, the ones out there doing this work diligently and chiefly keeping the faith and making your calling and your election sure. Don't let your sins weigh you down. Don't let your iniquities lift up themselves. That's what they want to do is your job to repent and keep it moving through the spirit of Yahweh Shai. Shalom.